All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to pay no attention to that hacker behind the curtain, a look inside the Black Hat network. We're in Mandalay EF with Neil Weiler and Bart Stump. A uh, few last minute announcements um, before we begin. Uh, if you haven't already, stop by the business hall in Bayside AB. Uh, you still have some time to pick up merchandise if you're interested. Uh, lastly, please put your phones on vibrate. Uh, and if you have any questions at the end, there are at least six microphones throughout the room. So please use those instead of uh, just shouting things out. Um, so with that, uh, please join me in welcoming our speakers. You? Sir, I'm the it's all you. Whoa. Are we, we're on. <laughs> so, uh, that was supposed to be secret. So last year we did a talk like this where we were just like, all right, we're, we'll do an end of the show, kind of this is what we saw on the network. And they had us in essentially a closet upstairs. Um, it fit about 300 people and it was overflowing out into the hall. And so this year they may have overcorrected um, a little bit. <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> Six microphones now. Um, so hi. Uh, my name is Neil Weiler. Um, is it, it's not moving. It moved over there. Is that going to stay up like that the whole time? Because these guys are going to want to see the stats. I don't even know how that works. <laughs> <laughs> Magnets. <laughs> how do they work? Um, all right. If we can try to say again. All right. Well, why doesn't everybody come over here? No. <laughs> We've got um, plenty of seating. <laughs> I will. I will let you guys know what the stats over here say through interpretive dance. So, uh, so I'm Neil Weiler. I, I'm better known as Grifter in the community. I've been uh, doing Black Hat and running all network operations at Black Hat for the last 14 years. Uh, by day, I'm a threat hunting and incident response specialist for RSA. And by night, I do a bunch of other things. You can see here Black Hat Review Board and Training Review Board, DEF CON Review Board. I'm the DEF CON department lead for contests, villages, events, parties, and the demo labs. So everything that isn't somebody doing what I'm doing right now. And uh, also help run the hacker space in Salt Lake City 801 Labs, which, uh, of which half of our team here is probably made up of, I would say. That was long winded. Uh, I'm, I'm Bart a badass. Stump. I don't know. <laughs> Look at that. What can I say? <laughs> I, they see that. Uh, I see your shorts is bigger than mine. <laughs> My name is Bart Stump. Uh, I've been doing Black Hat for about nine years now. Um, by day, I'm an SE adoptive. Uh, quite a few of the other things that Grifter does Black Hat Training Review Board, DEF CON Goon, and also 801 Labs Board member of the Hackerspace in Salt Lake City, which again he said quite a bit of our crew is uh, from, and we'll get into that. So that's us. Cool. This so important. we figured we would, um, we'd start out with showing you what it used to be like. So back in the day when we started doing the Black Hat Network again, for me, 14 years ago, this was the knock. It was literally an office. It was like a, the size of a walk-in closet behind a registration desk at Caesars Palace. Um, we used just some Cisco access points that you still had to throw cards into to get them to work, and a Cisco 2600. This is the, this is the first year that we did it. So you can see that's, that's quite the bit of equipment there. That's the second year which looks pretty much the same except we got those little silver net gears that are sitting on the top there. So big year for us. Um, and now, it's, is that not working? All right. Oh, crying shame. There we go. Cool. I don't use that. And this is where we're at now. So up here you can see us packing up the stuff to come to Black Hat. So what ends up happening is before we even get here, we have all the gear shipped to Salt Lake City, again, which is where we're at, and it gets shipped to our hacker space. We take it there, we start doing configurations, and we, um, and we get everything staged, essentially, to come out to Black Hat. Then we put it on a truck, just like in that upper uh, left-hand picture, and off it goes to Vegas. Th that is a very... Yay! Oh. Oh. Hey! Ooh, oh. hey. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Welcome this side of the room. Um, so then we put it on a truck and it goes to Las Vegas, which is a nerve-wracking, you know, 
little bit of time in there for us because we're like, please get there, please get there. If the truck catches on fire, no black hat. Um, so yeah, so you can see quite a bit more equipment there. Um, and when we get here, the, this is what it turns into. How many people poked their head into the knock this year? Yeah, that's what I'm talking Good. about. Okay, so you saw the, you know, the circus that it essentially is. That's not just theater. That's what we had behind closed doors before. We'd always set up like LED lights and play music and have an inflatable sheep and a, uh, a gorilla in there with us. Who we left? I know. I just thought about that. Ridiculous. Um, but we have our mascots in there. We wear wizard hats and weird glasses. Um, we had a dinosaur pay us a visit this year. But we just hang out and watch hacker movies and, and try to have a good time. Well, folks from UBM, the company that owns Black Hat, would come into the knock and they're just like, man, this is cool. Like, I want to hang out in here. Like, this is, you should really let people see this. We're like, nah, <laughs> we're good, we're fine. And they're like, no, really, we, we'd love to have you like, show this off to people. And we're like, okay, fine. Like, but we're not going to change anything like the way we do anything. And so, so that's what you guys see. Our knock team. So we have got two idiots. That's us. Um, 21 industry professionals. These guys, uh, we, we pretty much owe this show to those guys anymore. Uh, they're the ones running around doing all the hard work. Uh, we do a little bit of preparation before, but we're just figureheads at this point. Um, just a two idiots, 21 industry professionals. These guys come from all over the, the industry. Um, banking vertical, social media, uh, DevOps, networking, security, the whole nine yards. Uh, these guys are some of the smartest guys that I've ever met. Uh, and like I said, really keep us afloat. Um, so uh, a lot of thanks to these guys. Uh, multiple states and countries, and everybody's here on vacation. So uh, it's not always a vacation. There's a lot of stuff to do and get done and a lot of hours to be worked. Uh, so we appreciate them taking their time away. But it is legitimately how they spend their PTO. <laughs> this is like they take their vacation and they're like, I'm going to go do what I do every day, except an inflatable sheep will be there. <laughs> um, yeah. Now this one's a little uh, off topic from what we've normally done. Uh, but we've got one guy that's kind of stepped above and beyond a little bit here. And this is... Uh, yeah, so it's our buddy Steve Fink. So Steve, this, this is inside the hackerspace. It's the classroom at the hackerspace. We have a dedicated classroom. We got together in Salt Lake City a couple months ago. Uh, Fortinet, who sponsors the hardware for us, they flew a few guys out. Uh, Walter from Black Hat, uh, he's our, uh, our network dude at Black Hat. He flew out. We hung out in the classroom and, and whiteboarded things out. So you can see Steve was like helping us architect things. He works with Fortinet gear a lot. I was like, this is how we should put these things together. I think this will be the best way we do it. So he's put in countless, countless, countless hours on it. So we figured we'd call him out on a slide. So thanks, Steve. Where are you? <laughs> there he is. He's over there. Mwah, mwah. The extended team. So uh, most of you, if you've walked into the knock, you've probably seen their logos. You've heard, ah. Oh. Oh. All right. Um, Fortinet provides equipment, switches, firewalls. We'll get into some diagrams and stuff here in a minute and show you what the network really looks like. Uh, RSA provided their net witness suite. They're our operational intelligence partner, and what they've provided is, has been amazing. Ruckus provides your uh, conference wireless, so the Black Hat USA 2016 SSID is lit up by Ruckus. Uh, and then CenturyLink provides us our bandwidth. We have two one gig circuits. Again, I'll get into that a little bit more in detail right now. Right now. <laughs> At this very moment. I love when that happens. So it's kind of an eye chart I can understand from the back, but we've got quite a bit going on this year that we didn't have last year. We've got a few FortiGates that we're running. One is a wireless LAN controller, one is our actual. Um, WAN gateway. Uh, from there we go down and this year we actually replaced all of the distribution switches in Mandalay Bay's closet. <laughs> this happened last year. Everybody pulls out their phones. <laughs> Boom, I'll remember you next year. <laughs> we redesigned it all. But yeah, we want to show you guys what it is that we did. <laughs> this is legitimately, like people came in and they were taking pictures, taking video and stuff like that. This is the only thing that we didn't let you see inside the knock. If you noticed on the left hand side of the knock, there was a whiteboard that was turned away from you. 
the only thing we didn't want everybody seeing was all of the back end infrastructure with all the IP addresses. You guys have 50 minutes that it will still be up. Go. <laughs> the RSA guys are still sitting here. They need to go watch for something <laughs> to happen. <laughs> this is it's terrifying. Well, the he wanted to text to tweet this out when we were building it in Salt Lake City. I was like, are you nuts? I just, I want to share. I'm a share, I'm a giver. <laughs> So we've got all the distribution closets that we replaced in Mandalay Bay's uh, infrastructure basically so that we had full control and visibility into everything that was going on there. We put Fortinet switches in those distribution closets. We put the FortiGate down in their MDF along with all the other core infrastructure. Um, we've got a span port that feeds all of our tools, RSA, uh, NetWitness obviously, and a few other open source tools that we use. You guys have seen the Pew Pew map that we had in NOC called OIP. Oh, I didn't put the video in. That's um, OIP is an open source tool that we use, feed the information there off that span. Um, for our training courses, we have Fortinet APs that we light up the LAN for each classroom and maintain everything from there. So we've got a different wireless network for the classrooms than we do for the attendee wireless. So that's a little weird, um, but it's what we do right now. Um, Ruckus hangs off of another port there, and basically we act as their WAN gateway, so all the traffic feeds through the Forti gate, therefore over to NetWitness, so we can see everything that's going on across both of those disparate networks. So, I, I, I guess normally we'd wait to the end, but while the slide is up, does anybody have a question about how it was built out while we're looking at it? And so, so the question was, is this just an exercise in geekiness or is it really necessary? A little bit of both, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> if you had a bunch of people come to you and say, we'd like to give you all the equipment you want to set up one of the coolest networks ever, uh, what do you want to do with it? We're like, all the things. Everything? Yeah, <laughs> all of it. Like, send us your entire catalog. So, so there's RSA some... did that, like a pallet of stuff showed up and we're like, whoa. <laughs> They're like, we just want to make sure you guys power. had everything. They're like, I think we do. <laughs> Is there anything left for your customer base? <laughs> So yes, there's, there's absolutely some that is necessary as far as uh, keeping everybody away from each other as much as possible. And again, uh, we'll dig into a couple of things that we saw and, and what happens there as we'd go on. But uh, yes, we're nerding out, geeking out, as well as uh, actually building something secure for you guys to use. So uh, it's a little bit of both. Anything else before we roll on? I guess I would say too, though, a little bit more on that is that we are also, um, I don't want to say it's a lot of cooks in the kitchen, but we're also trying to incorporate the best practices from each one of the vendors that we partner with. So if Fortinet comes to us and says, here is the way that we think you guys should do it, um, and you should definitely include these things, then you know, we, we drop that down. And RSA comes to us and says, like, here's what we'd like to see. You, know, you should do it this way, this way, and the stuff should sit here. We're like, okay, and we drop that down. Ruckus, and so on and so on. And so you know, everybody gets together and you know, literally as a team, we get together and decide what is going to be the end product, and that's what this is. One more question before we roll on. Good? Okay. He's like, forget it then. Sorry. You cut him need off. that kind of fault. pressure. Some of the fun statistics that everybody wants to see. Um, so now we're pulling these statistics both from Fortinet's uh, equipment, their SIM that they use. Uh, a lot of it comes from RSA NetWitness, obviously being the intelli uh, operational intelligence analytics partner. Anyways, um, so these are all different stats we'll jump through. Uh, traffic summary, so you guys pegged out at about 400 gigs. The training makes up the majority of our network uh, traffic. The trainings, four trainings days. Uh, we'll get into some stats that show you guys don't like the wireless network. So um, session summaries, uh, four million sessions average. So that's... Look at when you guys go to lunch. Yeah. It's like, everybody eating. Um, go ahead. Total sessions, 125 million, um, over 10,000 gigs transferred, so about 10 terabytes. Um, we August. pulled these, we pulled that like a couple hours ago, so if you guys are like hitting it hard right now, then get after it. Again, 45 minutes, go. 
Now this next slide is always an interesting one. It's the top applications. Um, and we gave a talk at day zero talking about how to protect yourself on the network. Grifter uh, did an awesome post with dark reading about how to do that. And we said that a lot of the top traffic is generally um, Windows update and stuff like that. It's moved down the list a little bit, so everybody's not patching on site. That's a good thing. Um, right, yeah. Yeah, Windows update comes in at number six. The app get is down there all the way at 18, so. So that's good. I mean, HTTP is the top. I thought we had taught you better than that. I was say we we discussed this. Like I thought last year, it like I believe SSL like, was yeah, the top. SSL I could was check. the top. So we took a step backwards, but I think we just invited more press. Um, so yeah, I don't I don't know why that happened, but um, I has a sad like encrypted all guys. I, I would love to get on this network and just be like, oh, it's just all it's Open VPN made the top ten. That's good. Yeah. Some more statistics, uh, max packet capture rate. This is some of the statistics from NetWitness and what they saw basically off of our span port. Um, they saw about a gig of capture rate, 10 terabytes of total packets captured, nine terabytes again of that came from trainings, a terabyte came from just the conference Wi-Fi. Again, that'll boost up a little bit over the next 50 minutes as you start banging on us. Uh, 125 million sessions. Uh, 160,000 logs captured. Million. This is this is a lot of things, obviously. So, yeah, we like that non-standard traffic too. 60, just 60 gigs worth of stuff going over ports it wasn't supposed to go over. We saw you anyway. Um, what do we have here? Oh, so here's some of the like more interesting stuff. Again, like we we are disappoint. Come on, we're black hat. Like clear text off. 315,000, you know, I know a lot of that is, um, you know. <laughs> We lost count of the port scans. We did. But yeah, unique usernames, we've got quite a few, bunch of different passwords, and then, y'all are freaks. <laughs> right? You nasty. It was crazy though, because the porn spiked at like 4.30, and then just as it like the ended, it was like, I'm taking this back to my room. <laughs> I'm not paying for anything, Mandalay Bay. <laughs> I brought my own. So, yeah. Uh, did you leave that slide in? No, I oh. didn't. <laughs> we had a slide, um, but it, it, all right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we weren't done there. Oh, we can go back. Go back. Wait, let's look. Um, let's see. Clear text emails. Yeah, that's, no, that's right. That, a lot of, yeah, man, there's a lot of scanning going on. You guys did a lot of scanning. We were looking at stuff uh, one day, I think it was during the trainings, where you know, we had uh, activity like by country and things like where you guys were hitting, and then like the, the pie chart just all of a sudden this slice just goes like this. And we're like, what? Like, what is that? You know, we look and it's like, oh, it's the entire IP range for Iran. Like, we're like, Cool guys, thanks. You know, like, <laughs> thanks for drawing attention to us. Yeah, uh, but it's better than the entire IP range for the DNC, I guess, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, oh, topical. <laughs> topical. You ready? I like that. Top non-U.S. countries with threat indicators, whether that's downloading malware, beaconing, tunneling, etc. cetera. Uh, Korea, that's not threatening at all. Yeah, Korea. China, Japan, like just going crazy in Asia. I don't know. They got the best stuff, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, we just thought that was interesting. So, um, <laughs> whoa, that thing, that screen can't. So IRC over clear text. This is obviously pretty funny because we can see everything that you're talking about. And these hackers over here, if you look at the bottom left. Look, we don't want to see what you guys are doing, <laughs> but if you put it out there, I'm going to read it. Like. I'm, I'm like, what? What's this? What? But so, so really quick, one guy says, "Do you still have the HackRF pager script?" And he says, "Has a HackRF now as well." He says, "I'm thinking it might be worth trying out at the Luxor." <laughs> <laughs> like the norms have no idea what's in town right now. You know, There's, yeah, super we'll try it at the Luxor. It'll be super Zoo. Super Zoo. <laughs> Aw, Super Zoo. It's kind of an eye chart. Uh, search engine queries, passwords in clear text, clear text authentication, abnormal and malformed executables, quite a bit of stuff there. Email subjects, you can go through. Uh, Black Hat will post all these slides so you guys can go through and read those in a little more detail later. Yeah. Um, 
it was uh, like it was interesting. We think like in some cases you would watch the clear text off and like we've got this chart going on, and then at a certain point in the day, so when we set up the training networks, well, let me, I'm taking a step back now. So when we set up the training networks, we carve them up. So we carve them up by a classroom. We put, put them on separate VLANs. They can talk to each other, but they can't talk to the other classrooms. We do that because in the past, when you guys would see your neighbors sitting over there not knowing what you were learning, you were like, he'll never know. <laughs> and then would immediately attack the class next to you. So everybody is, everybody's carved up, you know, uh, and, and we could, we ended up talking to the Fortinet guys, RSA talked to the Fortinet guys, they said, hey, can you give us the uh, IP ranges for each one of the classes and we'll put some context in there so we could see it split up by each class and certain classes all of a sudden, like it would just spike, like the clear text off. So they were clearly doing a lab or of some kind um, and it would just go through the roof and then it would drop right off again. But it was just cool to see that. We're like, oh, it's lab time, you know, so. Um, email subjects were fun to look at too. <laughs> we're, like a lot of this stuff we were like, we were just talking about and they were like, you almost have to try to do insecure, you know, communications at this point. And so uh, we were looking at those and just had those come up and they were funny. There was some interesting stuff that came through. We had a bunch of spam coming through, like somebody's like laptop was being used as a relay or whatever and we're like, hey, bro, you know, walk in your class. You're going to want to fix that. <laughs> um, I can't even read what's on the bottom there, but. More porn. More porn. More porn. Oh, it is the porn. Ha, it is porn. <laughs> this was kind of funny. Suspicious binaries by classroom, and the top one has 200-ish suspicious binaries, and that classroom was actually the uh, skated course. Yeah. So but we um, we noticed something with that one. So there was uh, one of the guys from RSA came. He's like, "Hey, take a look at this." He's like, oh, "It looks like it's botnet traffic. You know, or what are they doing in that class?" We go and look at the class, we're like, it's, you know, SCADA class, I don't know, it shouldn't be botnet traffic coming out of SCADA class. So we're, you know, I, I don't know. Like, I don't put anything past Justin Searle. Like, that <laughs> dude will, like, never mind. Um, but, or like, botnet traffic seems a little bit crazy. We'll go in and see what's up. Uh, in the end, it was right at the end of the day. So the guy had left, and we're like, oh man, the dude left. But the, that night, I was talking to someone and they were like, oh yeah, my buddy who works with me, he's in Justin Searle's class. And, um, and we were talking about, we heard that somebody had, you know, there was botnet traffic coming out of someone's machine. Yeah, it was him. <laughs> like, he was like, he's like, well, he went back and looked and he was like, oh, like he was the smoking gun. So, um, so we did confirm that. And then there was just a lot of stuff coming out of there. Again, I don't know what they're doing, but we'll talk to Justin. <laughs> this also came from Justin's class. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, we got a, like about, what was that, about one and a half gigs or 1.3 gigs worth of traffic sent to us in like two and a half minutes. And that obviously lit up a couple of the sensors that we had. It's like, what's that? And so the um, RSA guys take a look and they're just like, hey, grifter, <laughs> come here. And it's like, I'm like, oh, love notes. I like that. And I like, I go in the class, you know, and they, I say, you know, knock it off or whatever. And then we come back and another one had gone out. Oh, we don't have the after. It said like, thanks for having a sense of humor. Like, and it just like, for a few minutes. But. And funny enough, it was one of our guys from Utah just being a. That was in Justin's class. Yeah. It's like, thanks, man. We don't have enough to look at. <laughs> Now this is awesome, and uh, I'm glad that they found this because this is something that should probably be fixed. So big fix, the uh, client enterprise patching solution. Uh, basically, enterprises put this on their machines. They can query all the applications, find out what all their machines have. Well, apparently they do all that stuff and all of the phone home and all the stuff back to the enterprise server in clear text. We had about 10 megs of host names, license status, file inventory. So if you wanted to know how to exploit somebody, you can see that they have a vulnerable version of Java installed or Flash or whatever the case may be. Just go watch for Big Fix and you'll be able to get some targets, I'm sure. Um, seven enterprise Big Fix servers that it went back to. We had about 50 different hosts. Uh, clear text HTTP, but it's not over port 80, brah. So we're good. <laughs> So. Here's that non-standard traffic we were talking about. 
You guys should fix that big fix. Uh, just general stuff, uh, you know, web shells flying around, you know, where, uh, what was the context behind this? Where's Sean? Sean. So just training class, they're just in there playing with stuff, or whatever. So, yeah, just an example of like the stuff. It's funny, like during the training classes, within like moments, as soon as the class is kicked off, it's just like everything goes <laughs> like it's like yeah, welcome to Black Hat. Like, it's awesome. But all right, jump to the next one. What we got? More again, just making the point of what's out there. Just people uh, downloading ransomware. I don't know if that was a classroom. Was that a class as well, or is this just general? Also from a classroom, but someone's like, someone's like, I was in that class. <laughs> it was me. Uh, and this is so I don't know that we've really mentioned this. This is uh, just taking another step back really quick. We don't block anything outbound. Whatever you guys are sending, it's going. So if you're downloading ransomware for a class, we can't block that obviously because they're doing. That's going to ruin their lab. That's going to ruin their experience and, and have all kinds of issues there. So we don't block anything outbound. If you're botnet traffic or ransomware is coming out, it's... Yeah, we're, we really are just observers. Like, we're, we're there to make sure that the network stays up and is stable. We don't take what is normally, uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, you know, my, my RSA stuff is to do, like, threat hunting and IR. So the IR part of my head sees something and says, like, oh, we should do something about that. And then the black hat part of me has to stop and say, let it go. Um, <laughs> Because, spread your wings. Yeah, spread your wings and fly, malware. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, normally it's just, it, it doesn't get to fulfill its full potential, so we just want to give it a chance to do that. Um, but yeah, we're, we don't want to be the reason that somebody in a class, like that their lab fails and stuff, and as more and more trainers come to us and they say, uh, I'm going to host my stuff in AWS now, and you know, I, like I, I love that because I just think like the poor folks at at Amazon, <laughs> you know, they're just they have no idea. I'm like, did you tell them? Like, is that you, that's cool? You're, that's cool. All right. Um, so, so yeah, as they do that, we see all this stuff flying out of the network, and we're like, yeah, we not sure if we should stop it, but I guess we shouldn't. You know, I don't want to be the reason that somebody's on stage in front of you know 2,500 people and their demo fails. So. We've got to let it go. Unless it's directly targeting our network infrastructure or if it's going after the registration network, which is, you know, obviously that we, we'd prefer that not get compromised. Uh, as I'm, you, sure I'm sure you don't want that to happen <laughs> yeah. either. Though. Where, so unless we see an attack go directly against something that will, like, in, in our eyes, like, cause actual damage, you know, we just let it, let it go around. We don't know. Hello? Whoa. <laughs> That is his way of telling me to shut up. Um, no, but we just, we just don't know if that is somebody sitting next to someone else in a hall and sharing, like, look at this cool trick I learned. We, we want to make sure that you guys have the opportunity to do that. Some different executable analysis, some, uh, again, just general stats that we're throwing out, and these will be a little bit easier to read once you go get the slide deck. Uh, quite a bit of stuff there. Do you have any color commentary on it? It's got plenty of color in it. I see what you did there. Hey, yo. Whoa. Oh, man. All right, we'll Speaking go. Speaking of demos breaking, my slides are gone. You guys. Hey, wait a minute. Where is Searle? <laughs> <laughs> so, is it coming back? All there right. There you go. Um, so, things like this. Like, here's a good example of where we're like, okay, we're seeing a lot of stuff. Should we or should we not do something about it? You know, so is this somebody who's playing or is this someone who's pwned or is it someone who's preparing to pwn? Um, if you look at the file names along the bottom, this is a who's who of malware. This is all one user pulling all of this stuff down. So we assume that this is somebody doing research, you know? I mean, or maybe they're just trading these things like Pokemon or something, but uh, but they're pulling it down and they're you know they're they've got quite the collection. Normally, if you saw this, you'd try to figure out who it was and what they were doing or where they were at. Whatever, and we're just like, ha ha, look, and it's a classic anecdote for this presentation. But but yeah, it's um, that's the kind of thing that we see and that we just kind of go like acknowledged and we move on. 
Um, oh, this makes it look like we're done, but we're not. So after, I think this is what we have for our, our infos, but, and we will, we'll have to get back to work after this, but we have, we left plenty of time for questions. Last year, we went right up to the end and we didn't get to get to all of them. So please fire away. I think, is there anyone from Fortinet in here? Fortinet, Fortinet, Fortinet. Yeah. Where? Okay, so we've got someone from Fortinet. Ruckus? No? Darian's here. Okay. RSA is here. I see them there. All right. So we can take questions all about the network. If you have a question specifically about one of our partners and what they do or whatever, we can have them answer the question as well. So fire away. Is this working? I see he, you were at the microphone, but it's not working, is it? Apparently not. Okay, there you go. It's working now. Hey, I was just curious how y'all provide for physical security. I saw access points lying on the floor. I mean, do y'all get stuff stolen every year? Or are people pretty honest around here? Yeah, we don't. We don't really get a lot of stuff stolen. Um, it's, it hasn't been an issue in the past. Don't give them ideas. Um, <laughs> free access points for the next half an hour. Um, <laughs> I guess that means we don't have to pack it up. Free access points for the next half. An hour. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, we get it. I mean, the stuff is out there. The access points are obviously sitting there, but there's not a lot we can do about it other than just keep an eye out. Uh, people generally, I mean, you guys are using the network, so even if you're playing on it, you're not interested in bringing, uh, bringing it down in a physical capacity. Like, people aren't taking the equipment or breaking it or doing anything like that. Um, in years past, I actually, I don't know if we got a bunch of, like, I didn't see anybody dropping flash drives this year. Last year, that was an issue. We had people throwing flash drives, like literally chucking them into classrooms, like while they were in session, like going through an open door, like whoop, you know, and they're dropping them all over the floor and stuff. But I don't know. I mean, this year it just wasn't a problem. At least if it if it was, we didn't get we back didn't to see us. it. So we just try we try to keep an eye on things from that perspective. But um, you know, there's not not a ton we can do. There's only so many of us. Two idiots, 21 professionals. Question. Question. Okay. Um, what are the issues uh, doing IPv6 in such a large network? Um, I assume you guys have considered them and um, anything to overcome for doing it next year? So we haven't really looked into IPv6 yet. As far as the private networks go, uh, there's plenty of addresses for us to use. We don't really fill that up. Um, it, it's, it's not so on it? <laughs> it. It's just something else to manage at this point. So we haven't really considered it, but there, there are some benefits to doing that. So it, it may happen in the future, but not, not yet. Okay, thanks. Absolutely. Go ahead. With the what? Oh, good point. So he asks what we do with the raw data. So literally everything that is collected, RSA has taken packet captures of the entire show. Uh, and one thing that we really want to express and, and let you know and, and really kind of hammer home, we delete all of that data. We don't keep any of that. We don't use that for research afterwards, which it could be really fun, but we've kind of promised you guys that we won't keep that, your data, even when you're Sending stuff in clear text. <laughs> yeah, like we're we will delete it. So you know, it's, we're, we're it's privacy honest advocates. The show as well. ends. You know, I mean, we we like privacy just as much as anyone else. I wouldn't want somebody just keeping my data. Uh, we monitor the network to keep it stable and to you know um, keep it safe, as safe as the blackout network can be. So we're we're doing what we can, um, and then afterwards, it's just, I mean, it's basically just diagnostic for us. Obviously, we get a few laughs, a few tears, a few <laughs>, laughs that lead to tears. But overall, it's just uh, it's just about making sure things go well. So it get, it's wipe. We don't want to anything that uh, during the show, all the reports we make, that kind of stuff. We love that. But afterwards, you know, done, done, done. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, what's the Wi-Fi password? <laughs> BHUSA2016. That's BHUSA all caps. <laughs> Thanks. Absolutely. 25 minutes, go. <laughs> Anybody else? Go ahead. So the question is, any major snags, any issues we didn't anticipate, anything like that during, uh, during the show? So 
let's see. So we roll out, basically what we're rolling out is an enterprise class network within a day and a half. So we get here, um, we had actually people come in earlier. We had folks that came in on Wednesday and replaced all of Mandalay Bay's infrastructure. It's terrible. Like it's old, really old stuff and we just, like we tried to use it last year. We're just like enough, we got to replace it all. Um, Fortinet sent us enough gear to replace all of the switches in 20 something closets or whatever. Like every, I mean everything got replaced. So uh, when you do something like that, you inevitably have something go wrong. And we had a couple of hiccups, uh, some of them through training, which is really frustrating because then people are in classrooms. But the experience was different from class to class. We would go in one class and say, how are things? And they were like, I can't get online, this is terrible. And we did have what we would you know, classify an outage, like it was just the wireless and the wired weren't working because it was something that was happening at the core level for an hour to an hour and a half on Monday? Or Tuesday. Monday or Tuesday. Monday or Tuesday, I can't remember. These are all like one day when you only sleep two and a half hours each night here. So, so yeah, that was unexpected. <laughs> um, I don't like having outages. I think it's the longest one in the 14 years that I've been doing this and, you know, like obviously we take responsibility for that. But, yeah, things come up. So, I think, I mean, that was the only really unexpected thing. The rest of the stuff is, you know, some things that could have been resolved with a couple other uh, ideas that we we've got taken notes make, and we'll reconcile, you know, but uh, nothing, nothing huge that, yeah. other and, than that. And if you guys have, like, if you have suggestions for things or you have feedback on the network or whatever, then you can email me, grifter at blackhat.com or bart at bart at blackhat.com and let us know. Like, say, oh, I think it would have been better if you did this or have you thought about using these things? Like, you know, take some time to think about what your experience was like and let us know because we're happy to like incorporate your suggestions as long as they're not woo, crazy. And this is always evolving. We've got different vendors that we've talked to about different solutions, adding a, a tap so we're not just running span ports, et cetera, stuff like that are, are some of the things that we're considering. Uh, and this is evolving year after year, so. Yeah. Does, Mandalay does Mandalay get to keep the to equipment? Get? No, they got money. They no, we have been told that they're up. I got so, some of my money. We've been told that they're upgrading the infrastructure, so we'll see when that happens. Yeah. And we may not have to deploy switches in the future, but that still gives us visibility and control over stuff. So we may, we will absolutely, we may do it anyway. Like again, just, like, just for that control and your safety. But but no, they don't. No, they don't keep the equipment. Yeah, I mean we are a little bit of control freaks about it. So um, we did. What replacing everything did for us was it allowed us to just say, I need to get into this closet. We don't get keys or anything like that. We don't have that level of access, but we call up, you know, someone from Mandalay and say, I need to get into closet, you know, five or something, and they come and let us in. And we can make the changes that we need to and swap around cables or power things down and up. And, and if it was their equipment, we wouldn't have, you know, the flexibility to do that. So even if there is um, Mandalay stuff, we might still put our own stuff in there. Plus, it made, so Bart was in Vegas for just one more day, so only 13 oh. days. Yeah. Go ahead. So we get a lot of, the question was we get a lot of uh, equipment from vendors. Do we ever see anything with the supply chain or back doors or exploits? Is that what you're asking, right? Oddly enough, <laughs> there, was, uh, there was an exploit that was released on Ruckus um, just a couple of days ago or a week ago or whatever. It all blends was together. Literally, was it yesterday? So it was yesterday. that absolutely happens, and that's one of the things that we work with the vendors to make sure that they're on par and they're working to, to resolve that. Um, they I don't did think resolve it. it. I'll say it. They did resolve it. So the patch, they had a patch to us and patched at midnight last night. So by, by today, they had already taken the steps to make sure that things were good. Clearly, we would have preferred that whoever was working with that vulnerability had done the responsible disclosure that would have not put all of you guys at risk. Um, but, you know, everybody likes the show, so. 
so, so they did a very good job, but there are certainly occasions that that may happen. In supply chain, uh, yeah, we've had to make some calls at midnight to get stuff the next day for things that were either unexpected. We've made fries runs for extra cables and switches and stuff like that, the dumb switches, but uh, there's always something. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, here, I'll give you an example of like, this is the, like a dumb thing, but this is our own fault. Um, so. Last year, after this is all done, like I said, after this we'll all we'll we'll tear everything down. Actually, that picture of Ali John is probably it's like that's the smoking gun we should have seen. That is a ball of cables and tape that happened when like the hotel had flipped a room, like they were getting ready for something else, and they took all of the cables and gaffers, tape and everything like that, and it was like they were cut and they'd been run over, and there was all this tape on them. They were like it, it was bad. So they got thrown away and that would just be a few or whatever. But what we didn't know was about 200 cables ended up getting thrown away at the end of last year and I had no idea. So when I sat down with Walter at Black Hat and we were planning for how much stuff we were going to need and everything, I did not account for 200 missing cables. So Walter went to Fry's three times. <laughs> Sorry, Walter. Um, <laughs> but that's the kind of thing like we're just like where, where are the cables? Like we sent everything from the warehouse, you know, and then when we have situations like that, thankfully we do have a, a fries that has everything we need. Go ahead. So. so how does the Black Hat network compare to the DEF CON network? So Grifter will know a little bit more, but we're, we're not directly involved with the network at DEF CON, but. So um, I can't speak to it from an infrastructure standpoint. I mean, I know some of the equipment they have and things, but. Uh, but they they do a debrief at the end of uh, at, at the closing ceremonies at DEF CON every year, so I won't I won't speak to that. But I can say, people often ask like what which one is more hostile or which one are you going to see more interesting things on? And in my opinion, I think the Black Hat network probably has more interesting general traffic. And I say that because at DEF CON again I, I'm the department lead for contests and events. So we have a capture the flag, we have an open capture the flag, we have a warlock games that's like for a very entry level things and different types of capture the flag skills. We have 50 other contests, 10 villages, a, you know, a whole bunch of different things for people to point their skills at, you know, or if they learn something new they can go try it in a sandbox somewhere that they can play. We don't have that here. So when students learn something in a training class, and there are thousands of students here throughout the weekend and into the early part of the week, they take the things that they've learned and they point them in the only place they can, which is our network and all of you. Like, so it's not, I don't think it's, you know, it's not a, a, a thing about skill or anything, although you guys are professionals. Like, you know, there are professional pen testers here. So if you want to, you can, have a lot of fun, but um, but it's just that the outlet I think is there at DEF CON and it's not here. I, I'm not interested in running a CTF here, so I mean I guess we'll just have slides like this. Go ahead. So basically the question, the question is uh, like the big fix enterprise clear text, do we see any other enterprise applications that have similar vulnerabilities or terrible design, right? Sean? All the time. All the time. Did what, did you have any off the top of your head that we got here? Just, you can come up for a second if you want to. Just come up so we can hear you. Is this, let's see. Yeah, Sean. Can we can we turn this mic on for a second? You can speak in mine, Sean. Come here. Oh yeah, it's on. <laughs> don't, you don't have to. Don't listen to him. There you go. Go. Yeah. So we see uh, we see that kind of stuff all the time. I think the big fix one was interesting because of the type and amount of information that was being sent. So you know, basically an entire host inventory. I can't remember what the volume was. 50 megs or 10 megs or something like that out to an exe file that was posted on a website in clear text, that was a pretty big deal. Um, but we see lots of weird behavior all the time. I mean, lots of applications communicate, authenticate in clear text back to a mothership or an API in other places. I mean, it's, it's very, very commonplace. Cool. You've got to have visibility into that. So that's why we're here. Thanks, Sean. You might come back up in a minute if somebody <laughs> asks another question.
<laughs> Go ahead. So did we do any stats on rogue access points or cell towers, rogue cell towers that pop up? So currently we don't actually have anything, well we do, but we don't have stats on rogue APs, we don't. They're not, they're not as big of an issue here actually that you would think they were. Next year we're looking at doing some stuff um, and it actually, the, the, I think the thing that's pushing us to do it more is, is the cell phone stuff. Like so, um, I'll, I'll give an example. We were doing this day zero thing. It was like an intro for people who are new to Black Hat. And we're standing in the back of the middle of nowhere of the, you know, the conference space getting ready to do it. And we're talking with Walter and he's like, and I was like, man, it's like you know everybody's getting here because the LTE speed has just like And he's like, yeah, it's really weird though because look what happens when I use it. He's like, look, I'm gonna load a page I haven't gone to and it like loads and we're like, yeah. Don't use that. <laughs> like, <laughs> like don't. So, so I'm sure there is, and there actually mode. are some vendors that provide specific stuff in monitoring cellular and wireless, and, and even just wired LAN ports. That we've looked into some of that. Haven't pulled the trigger on anything yet, but there, are, that, that, that is an interesting statistic. It's just not as big of an issue. That, that yeah, we've been talking about it. We we used to. It was more of an issue, honestly, I think a couple of years ago because it was new and shiny and people like to play with it and I think they've gotten bored. Um, the cell phone stuff is still shiny and so I think we're, we're, we're looking at things and we've already started talking about things to do to, to integrate that next year. But, um, but yeah, when, when we do have issues with rogue APs, the access points around them just essentially DOS them off the network, so. Go ahead. Anything that we anticipated that did not happen? Well, no, because I anticipate everything and I guess it oh, all kind of happened. Not really, not really, not at all. <sighs> we got a badass few, over there's here. A few instances, there's a few instances that, that I messed up. So, no. no? I, I think honestly, uh, like I said, things like get the USB drives being thrown around. Um, we, from a just infrastructure standpoint, we thought we were going to get more bandwidth from CenturyLink, but the circuits weren't installed yet or whatever. So we had planned, hoping that we could basically open the floodgates to you guys in terms of bandwidth. But you know, we've been assured that that will happen next year. So, you, like, I'm kind of stoked for that. Like, I, I'm I'm interested to see what you guys will do when you can just when you have all the bandwidth. Now that being said, like the network was st like because I know where that will end up going. The network was stood up for like 45 minutes and we got an email from CenturyLink that just says FYI, Batman versus Superman. It was a DMCA takedown yeah, notice. Yeah, that 45 yeah, minutes like, hey, somebody had already guys have, uh, I, We saw this being downloaded, this blah, blah, blah on your network and it was the whole spiel. And they like, but it was just an FYI from CenturyLink. Clearly there wasn't, they know there's nothing we can do about it um, and we're not going to block you know, BitTorrent or anything like that. We don't we don't block services. So, uh, but the network was up for less than an hour, and so I'm thinking about the time frame. I'm like someone had to download it, they had to see it, they had to notify them, and then they notified us. So it was probably up for moments, and someone was like, "Now I can get that movie." So if we give you all the bandwidth, you know, that should be interesting. We've only got a couple minutes left, so one or two more questions. There was one over here, right? Oh, perfect. That was his question. He's like, well, your question? Have you seen Batman versus Superman? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? That Richard I cannot answer. Why are we so sexy? It takes a lot of practice. <laughs> no, All right. Just me. Um, well, it's uh, cleared out a little bit. Now I feel yeah. a little lame. So we'll let you roll and we'll I get back to work. I don't blame you. We're going to DEF CON too. Thanks, guys. There's Justin Searle. I just saw him. Mm, oh, you.